Welcome to our secret headquarters. Thousands of miles below the Earth's crust. Shut up, you fool! How do we know we can trust them? I've talked a decent amount about Nickelodeon and animation here on the channel, and for a while now I've been hinting about the John Kay video, and how Ren and Stimpy went from being a childhood favorite of mine to a cartoon that I needed to side-eye enough for me to start asking questions. I'm familiar with a lot of animated series, and I'm no stranger to the fact that there are cartoons, anime, animated TV shows, and movies that are all specifically meant for adults. But that's not what John Kay's Nicktoon Ren and Stimpy was, at least not during the time that it ran on Nickelodeon's network. Ren and Stimpy was a cartoon that was bombarding the eyes of kids, but its humor and its context were nothing short of intended for adults. Don't worry, I'll explain. Before we get into that, I'd like to give a little bit of a background on John Chris Velusi. Born in Canada on September 9, 1955, John would spend his early years in Germany and Belgium during his father's service in the Royal Canadian Air Force. At the age of seven, his family would return to Canada and they would move around the country quite a bit, specifically during the middle of a school year, where John would spend most of his time out of school consuming and drawing Hanna-Barbera cartoons. As an adult in college, John would become heavily fascinated with the works of Bob Clampett and Tex Avery. John attended Sheridan College, from which he would be expelled toward the end of the 70s, responding by moving to Los Angeles to become an animator. Upon moving to Los Angeles, John would find his start on works like Super Friends and Tom and Jerry with the production company's Filmation Associates. Starting in the late 70s to the mid 80s, John would also work with Hanna-Barbera and Deke Entertainment with his first independent short animation, Ted Bakes One, releasing in 1981. Notably, John would also work on the 1985 series The Jetsons as a layout artist. One of the more successful projects John Kay would be a part of was Mighty Mouse The New Adventures. John would direct eight of the episodes himself as well as acted as a supervisor for the series. The show would become cancelled after allegations that the main character of the show was animated snorting cocaine, but this was denied by John, stating that the character was simply sniffing the petals of a crushed flower he had received in a previous scene. Chris Felusi would attempt to have the show revived in 1994, but Paramount declined to pursue it. After leaving CBS, John would move on to ABC Network to work on the new adventures of Beanie and Cecil. This was part of a negotiation with the Clampets, who wanted John on the production since he was such a strong proponent of Bob's style. This would result in multiple delays of the production, which also meant that the animation would suffer to meet the deadline. To make matters worse, ABC would express concerns over the overall tone of the show. ABC would attempt to soften the show as much as possible, and John would respond by making it more and more offensive. Surprisingly, the Clampets continued to support John despite the fact that they were not happy with the cartoon. ABC would cancel the show just after six episodes, deeming the humor unacceptable for children. Eventually, John would form Spumco Animation with Jim Smith, Bob Camp, and Lynn Naylor. This team created the pilot for Ren and Stimpy for Nickelodeon. This would garner extremely high ratings for Nick, becoming, at the time, the most popular cable TV show. The Ren and Stimpy show would be one of the first three Nicktoons to air on August 11th, 1991, premiering alongside Doug and Rugrats. Compared to its more light-hearted and fun counterparts, Ren and Stimpy was a lot more grim, featuring dark humor, sexual innuendos, adult jokes, and the use of shock value. Initially, during the Nickelodeon run of Ren and Stimpy, there were episodes that Nickelodeon executives wanted changed or outright scrapped, but John managed to keep them intact through a trade with Executive Kofi. The trade would be that he would get to release his crazy and wild episodes in exchange for more lighthearted and heartwarming episodes as well. Knew it! Get dirt! 
everywhere. Eventually, John and Nickelodeon's relationship would start to fail to the point that John would only communicate with the studio through his attorney. This was due to Spumco failing to deliver episodes on time, which was due in part to Nick's prolonged review process and the withdrawal of approval of certain scenes. I offer records covered in bubble gum. <laughs> Another setback would be the direction of the show, with episodes like Man's Best Friend portraying character George Licker as an abusive father. This episode would be banned from Nickelodeon. Other forms of censorship would be the removal of the cross from the hat of the Pope, and the burning of the U.S. Bill of Rights, and George Licker's name being changed to George American. Many other episodes would feature gross, violent, and suggestive scenes, one of which in particular depicted severed heads. John Kay would be fired from the show in 1992, and Games Animation would take over until the show ended in 1995. Two episodes were left unaired until 1996 when MTV would release them. Ren and Stimpy would later be revived in 2003 on Spike TV as part of the Spike TV animation block. This version of the show would explore more adult themes such as the use of strong profanity, graphic violence, and female nudity. The show would open with its first episode being the band Man's Best Friend episode, which would showcase characters consuming bodily fluids like snot, spit, and even puke. Nine episodes were ordered by Spike TV. After just three episodes, the show would be canceled due to John operating on his own time frame and not meeting deadlines once again. The Ren and Stimpy adult party cartoon would be released on DVD with an additional three episodes that had never aired. All of this would be the result of John Kay's choices in animation, story, and overall just being impossible to work with. Just this year, it had been announced that Ren and Stimpy would be rebooted on Comedy Central alongside other mature animations like Daria and Beavis and Butthead. This announcement was accompanied with the announcement that John John Kay would not be involved, nor would he be compensated. There's a reason for that, but first I'd like to add that my friend and fellow streamer Abby the Bird alerted me to the fact that the production for this Comedy Central revival has been cancelled, or at the very least it has been delayed for the time being. With all of that out of the way, let's dive into why we're really here. As I've mentioned in another video, John Chris Felusi was just one of many people faced with allegations and a proud Nickelodeon Creep Club card carrying member. In 2018, two women would come forward with allegations of sexual harassment and grooming that led to sexual abuse while they were underage. But these allegations went from hearsay to fact when both women were able to supply documentation to corroborate their stories as well as several former co-workers able to confirm his actions by referring to his sexual harassment as an open secret within the animation industry. Let's start with Robin Bird. In 1994, 13-year-old Robin Bird sent a video to John Kay talking about her dreams of becoming an animator. She had considered that if she could gain the attention of the creator of this hit show, it would pave the way towards a future career for her with Nickelodeon. Much to her surprise, John would respond to her letter, and in her mind, this was creating the first steps towards her dream. I'd like to note that, at this time, John was 39 years old. Before long, John would start to send gifts to Robin. These would vary in substance, like art supplies and toys. He would take things further by aiding her in creating an AOL account that I assume he would use to communicate with her through, though this would be disguised as a means to aid her in becoming a better artist. This would escalate to John coming to meet Robin in her home of Arizona. In her junior year of high school, John would fly her out to LA to show off his studio to her. During this same trip, John would touch Robin inappropriately through her pajama bottoms. Robin would recall the first sexual encounter with John to taking place in a hotel. Keep in mind, at this time, Robin was only 16 years of age. Robin would later serve as an intern and a girlfriend for John, inevitably moving in with him full-time at the age of 17 years old. As an intern, she would work making copies, organizing artwork, and learning how to animate. Robin believed at this time that their relationship was rebellious and edgy because it was never meant to be. John would romanticize the age gap between them. Robin would go on to say that John did not care about her emotional well-being. Even more disturbing is the fact that there were many other employees of Spumco that were aware of the relationship and chose to stay silent due to the environment that John had created where being offended was in itself 
offensive. After all, they were creating animations with sexual themes. There were even nude drawings around the office, one of which an employee specified that there was a nude photo of Robin on display in the office with a dog ejaculating onto her. This very same employee would go on to describe a party where John had presented photos of himself with Robin while she was underage, performing fellatio on him, asking said employee how it made him feel. This would be corroborated by a second employee stating that at a different party, John presented a stack of Polaroid photos of John and Robin conducting sex acts. A third employee would state that John Kay presented them with a binder filled with similar photos. Robin states that she does not recall taking these photos, nor being aware that John ever even had them in his possession. She would eventually leave John and the animation industry. During her time with John Kay, Bird would also be introduced to Katie Rice through AOL. Through their communications, Rice was able to confirm to Bird that despite never having a physical relationship with John, he had begun to hit on her at a very early age. These flirtatious behaviors would range from John sending her flirty letters to masturbating while talking on the phone with her. Rice had wanted to be an artist as early as the fourth grade. Katie had first written to Chris Felucci around the same age as Robin and continued to communicate through the use of AOL. Living high on the hog! John would proceed to tell her things like, I want to squeeze you, and I'm crazy about you, Katie. Do I ever make you tingle? What? What the fuck? Katie and John would meet a couple of times in Los Angeles, and their correspondence would continue after her family relocated in 1996. In a BuzzFeed article, Katie recalls multiple phone calls where John would request her to repeat after him certain words as he pleasured himself. Of note, Things would get much, much worse with the harassment from John when Katie would work for him out of his home office. Katie mentioned to Robin via email correspondence that John would do all kinds of outlandish things such as waiting in his home naked for her to arrive for work or walk around with his genitals exposed and communicating to her that he had received advice from friends that the only way he would win Katie over would be to sexually assault her. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Creamed corn and more creamed corn. I can't eat this slop. Rice would eventually leave, specifically the first reason being because of the sexual assault joke. The second reason would be when she found CP on his computer. Rice would go on to say that she found images of nude girls that she did not recognize. One of these particular images would be of a 10-year-old girl, nude, with her legs spread with a fearful look on her face. This, too, would be corroborated by an unnamed ex of John's, stating that she had also seen naked images of prepubescent girls on his computer, ranging in age from 12 to 14. Rice would successfully report the CP to authorities in 2017 after three prior attempts. Following these statements, John's lawyer would confirm that for a brief time, 25 years ago, John had a 16-year-old girlfriend, but denied John's avid pursuit of Katie Rice and also denied that he was ever in possession of photography of underage females. John K. would later, air quotes, apologize, stating that he was motivated by undiagnosed bipolar disorder, ADHD, as well as very poor impulse control. This was met with criticism from both women and was received as a non-apology and a poor attempt to deflect blame from himself. Again, all allegations were reported to law enforcement, however, no arrests or investigation was ever formally conducted due to the statute of limitations having passed. Despite all of this, all of the evidence that was brought to the surface, it would remain apparent that former employees and co-workers of John's would still have positive things to say about Chris Felucci. This is due to us as individuals separating the art from the artist, and this isn't something that's uncommon at all. Former employees would state that they owed John a lot, despite the things that he had done, or that they they wish they could have done more to put an end to all of the madness. Paramount Network, as well as Cartoon Network, claimed that they were never made aware of any sexual assault or inappropriate behaviors, nor would they have tolerated it. Nickelodeon would decline to comment, however, there are no longer any mentions of John Kay within their studio. For Robin Bird, she feels that John Kay ruined her childhood and some of her adult life. She would leave the animation industry and change career paths entirely. To her, 
she recognizes the manipulation, the gaslighting, and the clear and concise abuse of John Chris Felusi. Katie Rice shares similar sentiments, wishing that she had never made contact with John despite the skills that she may have gained along the way. I feel as though it's pretty fair to say at this point that John Kay was a pretty disgusting human being, and to some degree, I don't know if I feel comfortable saying that this is a situation where I can separate the art from the artist. I'm capable of doing that in some situations, but in this one in particular, I just don't think that I could ever really see Ren and Stimpy in the same light, knowing what I know about its creator and the things that he's done as a human being. I will admit, when I was a kid, Ren and Stimpy was easily one of my favorite animated series at that time, besides Doug and Rugrats, and of course there were obviously other Nicktoons that came out that I really, really appreciated, but uh, this was always one that stuck out on my mind. I even had I even had a Ren and Stimpy plushie that I can remember that I had for a very, very significant amount of time when I was a kid, but just hearing about all of these things and doing the research and, and finding out that these were not allegations, this was factual. These are all real things that happened, and it was confirmed not only by the two women that were subjected to the assault of Chris Felusi, but also confirmed by staffers that worked for him or worked with him. Nothing I've said in this video is false information. All of this is true. And it's a shame that justice was never served for these women. It's a shame that nothing ever happened to Chris Felusi. At this point, uh, I, I'm guessing only time is going to win that battle because Chris Felusi is now an elderly man. That's what I mean by time will win. As always, let me know what your thoughts are on this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps to land it in recommended. Leave a comment down below. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Ding the notification bell so that you get notified every time I post new content to the channel. Give me a follow on Twitter and maybe even check out my Twitch channel if you're interested. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.